Okay, everyone, I'm going to um, start this webinar now. Hi, I'm Karen Middleton. I'm the Chief Executive at the Charter Society of Physiotherapy. Just want to welcome you all. Um, we're here, and hopefully you're here, to um, get ready for the workplace. Um, and I hope you're somewhere cool, able to uh, listen and watch this webinar. Um, so getting ready for the workplace, I imagine you're all in slightly different places, uh, whether you finish your studies, still studying, got dissertations, essays to hand in, got jobs, not got jobs yet. And I imagine you all have a mixture of feelings. It's uh, probably an exciting time. It's a time of relief. The training's over. Um, a mixture of feelings. But what I really want to say to you as a physiotherapist um, who's towards the end of her career. Um, it's the best career, the best profession in the world. It's changed my life. It's changed the lives of so many people. And the difference you can make to patients, the public and their families is just second to none. So whatever you're feeling at the moment, uh, ready for this next transition, um, you've made the best decision in the world to train to become a physiotherapist. So we've got a lot to get through um, and uh, there will be the opportunity to ask questions and please put them in the chat as we go through and Daisy will either pick up the questions at the end or we will respond uh, via email. So um, if you don't get your question answered, it will you will receive an answer. Don't worry about that. Um, if you're comfortable, please leave your camera on. Um, if not, don't worry. And um, just to make sure everyone's aware, this session is being recorded. So um, let's start by talking about who we are. I'm going to ask the panel to um, introduce themselves. So Kristen, do you want to start? Hi there. Yeah, I'm Kristen. I'm one of the student officers at the CSP. Um, I work with the education team and I work closely with student representatives at the CSP. Um, and I just wanted to answer a question in the chat from M. Um, will the recording be shared after? Yes, it will. Um, so please go ahead with trying to put your daughter to bed. Um, I'll hand over to Daisy now to introduce herself. Uh, thank you, Kristen. I'm Daisy and I'm a student officer at the CSP as well, and I mostly lead on our visits to HEIs, so hopefully we'll be seeing some of you in our visit period. Thank you. Alex? Hi, I'm Alex Lambiaya. I'm a physiotherapist by background and a professional advisor at the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy. Adam? Hi all, I'm Adam Morgan. I'm a senior negotiating officer or the full-time trade union officer. Uh, for Wales, uh, Worcester, Gloucester and Hereford. And last but not least, Alice. Hi, I'm Alice. I'm a physio by background and I work as a trade union organiser within the trade union uh, department of the CSP. So just by way of introduction, I, I want to stress to you that whatever mixture of feelings you, you've all got right now as you uh, are about to go into the workplace, the CSP is there for you to support you. Um, we are the UK's only physiotherapy specific professional body, educational body and trade union. And we have about 67,000 members, which means that we have a very influential voice nationally and locally. And we have members who work in all specialisms, um, and in all sectors and our members really now come from all walks of life and we are working really hard to do to diversify the profession we know that the more diverse our profession the better the profession will be and um, the better it will be for our patients and their families in the long run so we have members who are chartered physiotherapists um, who have qualified as physiotherapists we have support workers and we have students, new graduates and also those who have retired. So we literally, as a membership organisation, support you from pre-registration while you're training as a student all the way through to as and when you retire. 
and um, we're a huge force to be reckoned with. But the more members we have, the more influential we are in terms of being able to champion the profession, to champion physiotherapy and be able to support you. So it's really important that you become a member of the Charter Society. And I think what you're going to hear from the rest of the panel now is what we can offer you when it comes to membership as you go into the place of work. So I'm going to hand over now to the panel. I think, Alex, you're starting. Yes. Um, good evening. Yes, I've already introduced myself. I'm Alex. And I'm just going to uh, start the slide with talking about being a chartered physiotherapist. So, um, which uh, Karen has already mentioned. So once you're registered with the Healthcare and Professions Council, which we'll talk more about throughout the presentation, and you join the CSP as a chartered member, you gain, char um, you gain um, the title chartered physiotherapist, the status, and you can use the letters MCSP after your name. So chartered status it really is a badge of excellence that many employers prefer and patients appreciate, and it shows that you're part of the UK-wide professional community and committed to the highest standards of practice. Being chartered means that you're more than just a physio and that you're part of the community and the voice of the profession. And personally, for me, it just gives me a sense of belonging and the confidence that there's a strong community of physiotherapists I can go to for support. So just a little bit of background about how this community of physios came to be. It, the CSP was founded by four nurses in 1894, and it was awarded its Royal Charter in 1920 and has become the profession's leading membership organisation in the UK. The Royal Charter was granted by King George V in recognition of the society's high standing and its respected education and professional standards it gives. And it gives the CSP the power to award its practicing members chartered status, an honour that continues to this day. So the type of things included in the CSP's Royal Charter are improving training and education and professional status, maintaining a register of members who are qualified to practice or teach, and to run schemes for the benefit of members, particularly in times of adversity, sickness and old age. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide is about the Health and Care Professions Council. And as I said before, we'll talk about it throughout the presentation. So it's shortened to the HCPC, as you may know, and it's the body which regulates 15 health and care professions, such as physiotherapists, paramedics, radiographers, spe and speech and language therapists. And the title physiotherapist is protected by law and ensures that you're recognized as a professional. So to claim your professional title and practice as a physiotherapist, you need to register with the HCPC. The primary role of the HCPC is to protect the public, and it does that by setting standards in relation to education, training and practice, keeping a register of those and keeping a register of those who don't meet the standards, i.e. you, and it can take action um, against those professionals on the register if they don't meet the standards. And this is where we can come in. Hopefully it will never happen, but if a concern about your practice is raised with the HCPC, we can support you with the process. We have a team of officers on the trade union side of the CSP to provide advice, support and representation. And in addition, should it be needed, we have an in-house solicitor who can deal with fitness to practice cases. So to register with the HCPC, you need to sign up for account, log in and create a new application. And then the HCPC website will take you through the process. You pay a registration fee. It's an upfront cost, which includes the application scrutiny fee of £68.68. .68. And the registration fee for new graduates is cheaper at £98.12 for two years registration. And that works out as £49.06 a year. If a new graduate joins the register less than six months before the start of the next professional year, they receive the remainder of the period free of charge. And continuing on with the HCPC, this is about the renewals. So every two years, along with other registered professionals, you're required to renew your registration with the HCPC. And don't worry if you forget, we will remind you. However, it's really, really important that you keep your contact details up to date with us and the HCPC. So a common mistake is that people put their, um, email, their work email address in and then in two years time, they might have moved. So um, either use your personal email or just make sure you keep it up to date. 
You need to sign a declaration and pay the renewal fee, which is £196.24 for two years, £98.12 a year. And fees can be paid in full or by instalment. And the declaration asks you to confirm that you continue to meet the HGPC standards, including those related to continual professional development. Now, it's important to note that the HCPC standards of proficiency are changing from the 1st of September this year, and they're moving away from registrants passively understanding the standards to demonstrating they're actively implementing the standards in practice. So it's important that everyone's aware of these changes and they are able to demonstrate their practice meets the new standards by the state. And the CSP, again, is here to help you with this. So we are doing a number of articles in our membership magazine Frontline. We're signposting members to lots of resources. We're developing a web page. So please keep an eye out for that. Once you register as a physio, you'll be required to keep an ongoing log of your learning, a bit like you're doing as a student. And as part of the HCPC's audit process, a small number of regist registrants will be rand randomly selected to demonstrate this competency. So if you are selected, you'll be asked to submit a portfolio and you may be aware, but the CSP provides a digital portfolio just for this purpose. Um, and you might have already um, used it um, or already um, as part of your placement or to aid revision. Um, but we can't stress enough how important it is for you to be able to demonstrate that you're meeting the standards. And again, we'll provide support um, in we. We do provide support in the form of resources um, and access to our team of professional advisors, but also the HCP website has lots of resources around this. So moving on, sorry, me again. Um, I'm going to talk about insurance. So it's the final piece of the HCPC puzzle. And um, as part of being a physiotherapist, you need to prove that you have appropriate professional identity for your practice. And this is something we provide as a professional body at no additional cost to your membership fee. Most employers will have an insurance scheme that covers you while you're undertaking the duties of that specific role under the contract of your employment. However, you need to be aware that you're not insured should you venture um, into private practice. And private practice can be very, very broad and even cover activities like giving advice to a friend or family or doing extra hours at a rugby club. So I can't go into detail about that now, but if you're looking at, um, at the sort of difference with private practice and being employed, I'd really recommend that you look at the CSP's network for private practice physiotherapists, Physio First. And for more insurance advice, please look at our web pages. We've got lots of um, resources and downloads for that. Um, put simply, our professional liability insurance has two strands, medical malpractice and public liability. And as you can see, um, the insurance covers all activities within the scope of physiotherapy practice in whatever setting you work subject to terms and conditions. And medical malpractice covers you for claims of personal injury to your patients, for example, failing to assess and treat them properly. And public liability covers you for non-personal injury claims which are not associated with your treatments, for example, slips, trips and falls coming in and out of your clinic. So the CSP insurance scheme covers you for £10 million for any one public liability claim, as well as £7.5 million for a single professional liability claim. And so obviously you could pay separately for this, separately from the CSP, but it would likely cost a lot more um, than the CSP membership asks for in a year. And we also have a dedicated team to help you around insurance claims. Thank you, Alex. So as mentioned earlier, uh, I just want to touch a little bit more on the HCPC. So the main function of the HCPC is to protect the public and uphold public confidence in, in the physiotherapy profession among and the other professions they uh, they regulate. It is therefore not a membership organization and they're not on your side. What you're paying for, you're paying for the privilege to be a registered professional. You're not paying to be a member of the HCPC. So the HCPC as a result is obligated to investigate any concern that is raised about the professional on the register. A concern could be raised by a patient 
patients, family, a colleague, an employer, or member of the public. So in essence, anybody can make a complaint to the HCPC about a registered professional. A common misconception is that people think only incompetent physios get referred to the HCPC, but that's not actually true. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later to just demonstrate how that's not actually kind of factually correct. And just to stress, it's, it's relatively easy for a referral to the HCPC to meet its criteria for investigation, whether that be clinical or behavioral concerns or something that could damage confidence in the profession like conviction. So it's not only what you do in your um, in your professional practice, but also if something happens in your public, um, in your in your private life, that can be subject to the HCPC investigation should it be referred. Your employer will not assist you in a HCPC investigation because the investigation is about you. And it's also not uncommon for an HS, HCPC investigation to last at least kind of two years. During that time, depending on the nature of the allegations, there may be temporary restrictions put in place that in the worst case could suspend you from the register. Legal representation in that process isn't obligatory, but it can make a real difference and it potentially avoids the need for a, a court hearing at the Health and Care professionals, Professions Tribunal Service. So the HCPC Tribunal Service actually is within the kind of legal structure of the UK. If there is a court hearing to, 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 to look at the allegations against you, the stakes can be very high with serious cases potentially le leading to people being removed from the register. The HCPC will be legally represented at any hearings and they have a, so having a lawyer um, representing you will increase the likelihood of a better outcome should you, should you be in that situation. Once the HCPC puts formal allegations to members, the CSP provides legal representation until the HCPC investigation ends. This includes being represented at the tribunal hearings by a solicitor or barrister. The cost of funding support for each case is at least £2,000, but can go up into tens of thousands depending on the complexity of the case. So I think I said enough on the HEPC. It's not the most exciting topic and it is a little anxiety provoking, but it's worthy of your attention as a soon to be qualified physiotherapist. The main thing I want to stress is remember it's a regulator and it serves the public. It doesn't serve you as a professional. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about stewards and safety reps. So as Karen was saying, the CSP is a trade union body representing people delivering physiotherapy services. We have a network of stewards, safety reps and equality reps who receive comprehensive training from the CSP. And if you were to encounter a problem or issue within the workplace, the CSP stewards and reps can offer you advice and support throughout that, that issue. They represent members both individually or collectively, and it's a core cool role of the CSP steward to be the voice of the membership. The CSP aims to have at least one steward and one safety rep per employer. However, we do aim to, to grow those workplace teams, particularly if we have a large employer or it's kind of geographically fragmented, um, like lots of ours in Wales and Scotland. Um, so we make sure that we have good coverage to make sure that all of our members have reasonable access to their local representative. So within the CSP uh, roles, we'll have a role that has a focus on health and safety, uh, which is our safety reps. And they and then we have our equality reps who promote equality within the workplace. And then we have our stewards that often do more individual casework or collective casework. Um, it's really important um, to note that trade union membership gives you a voice at work. Uh, when you face issues such as pay, anything to do with your employment contract, disciplinary procedures, injury uh, injury or ill health or any discriminatory issues um, and not to frighten you of the the big bad and scary workplace but unfortunately all you know as a physiotherapist you may encounter these issues and um, particularly with the NHS being under so much pressure um, but it's really just to reassure you that we have these roles within the trade union that will support you through those issues um, what I would also say is these are elected roles, um, so you can stand for election um, and it doesn't matter on what your level of experience as a physiotherapist is, um, whether you're qualified, um, sorry, whether you're associate member um, or a non-registered member. 
Uh, it doesn't matter on your banding. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're rotational or static. Um, as long as your uh, colleagues elect you into that role, um, then you can take on that position. Um, and we know that it's a really good way for our membership to gain new skills um, and kind of be in the know in the NHS. And I think it's worth noting that um, Karen Middleton was a steward um, and look where she is now. Um, and we know statistically uh, lots of our leaders within the NHS that represent physiotherapy did start their journey as a CSP steward or safety rep. So that's worth bearing in mind uh, for when you do settle into the workplace. So I just wanted to touch on kind of an example of how local stewards and us as a CSP um, helped individuals um, in a case in the workplace where they got tangled up in something through essentially no, no fault of their own. So there was a situation where there was an agency member of staff who was displaying behaviours that was not basically not in line with what the health board would, would expect. And this was kind of during the pandemic. Numerous warnings were made to the agency physio to correct that behaviour, but they, they basically didn't didn't improve, and it it, it was deemed that it, that person's um, ongoing kind of uh, role as an agency physio it was untenable, so they ceased his contract as a um, agency physio, so they dismissed him. The agency physio then obviously wasn't happy, so they initiated a raising concerns process with the health board, making a series of allegations, particularly against three um, individual physiotherapists. So during that process, the, the individuals had to be interviewed by um, individuals in the uh, in the investigation team, looking at the raising concerns, examining their their um, clinical practice and also their behaviours, and the CSP supporting them closely with that. At the end of that process, through our support as well, it was found that there was no case to answer through that raising concerns process. However, that's not the end of the story. Following that, the individual also put in an employment tribunal claim against the health board um, and the three individuals were named in that as well. So they needed to go through a process of going to an employment tribunal, um, which again, I was on the end of the phone to support them with that. But worse still for them, the agency physio then proceeded to refer all three of those members to the HCPC and the HCPC initiated an investigation um, against them. That investigation lasted best part of a year, probably just over a year. But throughout that process, they had the full support of the CSP. I, I supported them through that HCPC process. Um, and I was in constant, con continuous contact with HCPC and following kind of the, the, the result of the raising concerns process um, and my communication with the HCPC, we um, was able to get the case thrown out from the HCPC before it reached what was called an investigating getting committee panel stage. So I think that just goes to show that it's not just incompetent physios who end up on the receiving end of investigations internally within an organisation or HCPC investigations. And uh, the one thing I will say, they were extremely thankful that they were members at that time and for the support that we provided right through that process from, from right at the start, right to the end. Um, and all in all, that probably lasted 18 months where they had continuous support from the CSP. So as you, uh, you would have gleaned from the previous slides, one of the main functions of the CSP as a trade union is to protect your rights at work. We have resources available to help you safeguard these rights, and you can use the QR code um, on this slide to bookmark a guide for newly qualified physios that tells you all about what to expect from your employment contract. I won't dwell on it too long, but it's important to note what, how important your contract is. The employment contract is a legally binding document. It is formed when a job is offered and then accepted by a successful candidate. It is a contract under law and your employer is obligated to give you a written statement of particulars which outline your pay, your terms and conditions of your employment and a copy of your job description. When you uh, receive um, a contract of employment, you know, once you've gone through the, 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 the daunting prospect of the interviews, you've been offered the job because you've done fantastic at the interview, make sure you read that um, uh, contract of employment. 
particularly if you're going to work in the independent or private sector, okay? What we sometimes see in the independent private sectors are contracts that have specific clauses, which on the surface might seem acceptable. You know, you're very excited to get your first job. You think, oh, I'm just going to sign, sign the contract. That's not that bad. I can deal with that. But after, afterwards then, those kind of little clauses can come back to haunt you. So just to give one example of those, uh, it, there's, there's things called restrictive covenants, which a lot of private practice um, put into contracts that basically prohibits you from uh, working for, a, um, uh, for a, basically a competing physiotherapy service within a certain radius of that employer for a certain period after you left the business. So for example, you know, say you were working in Cardiff, they might put, you know, in a um, 10 mile radius, you can't work for another private kind of physiotherapy company in that in that area. So that they're, they're very kind of key elements that once you leave that employment, um, you maybe not think of it when you first start employment, but when you leave it, it does create some problems. Then when you start work and you're being paid, you are effectively accepting the terms of your employment contract. The signature on your paper contract is not essential. Lots of people come to me and say, well, I never signed a contract. It's irrelevant. Once you've started working and being paid, you're, you're basically accepting the terms of that contract. So therefore, it is important that you ra raise anything that you're unhappy with, either prior to starting work or immediately after. Because if you leave it too long, then it will just be deemed as you've accepted the terms of that contract. If you have discussed and been given assurances on anything at interview, say, for example, flexible working arrangements, make sure that you have that confirmed in, in writing. Should you have any doubts about a clause in a contract, always take advice from us if you remember. So when you qualify, when you get that first job offer and you get the contract, if you think, oh, I'm not too sure about that clause, you can go through to inquiries and be passed on to a, an officer on the road there, um, or the officer that covers your area and can provide you advice on that specific element of that of that clause but always check it out with the employer as well so band five rotational nhs roles are the most common jobs that graduates uh, pursue after university 58 percent of new graduates are working in or about to start band five nhs jobs so the next section is likely to be relevant when considering your next steps So the terms of NHS contracts have been negotiated at a national level by the CSP as a trade union in conjunction with other health care trade unions. And that forms part of Agenda for Change, which is the pay um, and condition structure that we use within the NHS. Because uh, the CSP was a key player in ensuring that when we moved to Agenda for Change, that physiotherapy as a profession were protected um, in terms of the terms and conditions we were offered. Um, thinking about things like pay, holidays, hours of work and leave. And that has been in force since 2004 and applies to all four nations of the UK. Although there is some slight de uh, deviation um, due to dev devolved decision making. So you will see that pay can be slightly different and annual leave allowances can be slightly different across the four countries. Um, in terms of pay structure, there are eight pay bands. Um, there were nine, but we have now uh, removed band one which was discontinued following the 2008 national pay negotiations, which was a win for the trade unions because that's the lowest paid grade within the NHS. All newly qualified physiotherapists start as a band five. And like I said, the band five salary will vary slightly from country to country, um, but also um, thinking about the London waiting if you are based in London or any of the London boroughs. Uh, should you take a job in the private or independent sector, very often the rates of pay are similar to NHS ones and they'll often kind of benchmark their pay on NHS ones and other terms and conditions like annual leave and pensions may not be as good. So it's worth making some good comparisons there and try and focus on some of the other um, contract details that aren't pay. So things like any, uh, pensions and annual leave, because often people do get a little bit wrapped up in pay and fail to miss some of the maybe slightly different changes that exist. I think that's everything I wanted to say on that slide. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, although pay is always the headline, it is important to look at all of the terms and conditions. And you'll find these in the AFC handbook, 
What I would say is that handbook is absolutely massive and it changes frequently. But um, if you are struggling to um, understand any things that are in the AFC handbook, that's where your steward or safety rep can become really helpful to you. And you can seek advice for them if you're already in the workplace. Um, they're very experienced in kind of understanding that handbook. Um, but equally, if you're not in the workplace yet, then you can contact the CSP for some advice around some of those um, details. So the standard working week in the NHS as it stands is 37.5 hours and you will work these over a set number of days and the annual leave is 27 days um, in England and 28 days in Wales uh, when you first start plus your eight bank holidays. Um, in the NHS, should you become unwell, you will receive occupational sick pay, which is the equivalent to your usual pay. How much you will receive will depend on how long you've been employed. Um, so the maximum is six months uh, full pay, then six months of half pay. Um, and additionally, there are other occupational benefits that go way beyond the statutory mini minimum. And that's things like maternity, pater maternity, paternity and parental leave. Um, and like I said, these may not be top of your list, um, but it is worth bearing the mind in for, uh, for future. Um, and also thinking about the pension scheme, um, although changes have been made to it over the year, it's still very good um, as a pension scheme, particularly when you compare that to private sectors. Um, and the benefit of the scheme are defined and calculated in relent relation to your length of service and pay. And your contributions come out of your salary each month and you are automatically enrolled in the NHS when you do join up as an employee. You can opt out. Um, I think it's been a particular, um, we're seeing a particular rise in people opting out um, because of the cost of living crisis. But I, what, what I would say is it you really need to look into that before you make that decision, because like I said, it is quite a healthy um, pension scheme. So we would want members to avoid opting out. Although, as the CSP, we don't give specific and individual pension advice. Hi, Gladys. And not to go too much in Lewis and I but if you opt out your pension, you're opting out of an additional salary because once you opt out, the employer then doesn't pay into your pension scheme. So, by when you're in the pension scheme, you contribute, but your employer also contributes. Um, so, you're, you're missing out on free money once you opt out. Uh, so other AF uh, agenda for change terms include an appraisal and development programme linked to the knowledge and skills framework. Uh, and this is also the mechanism for determining progression within the pay bands. So every post has a knowledge and skills framework outline, which specifies what is required in the first year and then again after several years. And this aligns with the points on the pay bands. Pay progression has changed somewhat over the years. Before 2017, it could take up to eight or nine years basically to progress to the top of the band. What we've managed to do as part of the national pay negotiations is significantly reduce that time scale. So this slide is a pictorial representation of progression. So as a band five, after two years, as long as you've been meeting all your, um, uh, your objectives, you will move up to an intermediate pay point. So this is where you, so you'll start at the bottom of band entry point of band five, um, after two years, you will get an increment uh, to the intermediate point. Um, and then a further two years, as long as you continue to meet all your objectives, you will be at the top of the band five program then. And as you can see, it's a similar route as you move through the bands. When you get promoted, you will always start then at the bottom of the band. Thanks, Adam and Alex. That, Alice, that was brilliant. Um, we're just going to talk a bit more about the role of the CSP, as Karen touched on at the beginning of the presentation. Um, so as we've talked about, the CSP champions fair pay terms and conditions for physiotherapy staff in both national and local negotiations. And I'm sure you won't have missed that last year we had NHS physiotherapy staff in England, Wales and Scotland taking strike action for the first time in history over pay and retention issues. And of course, we want to all be at work and NHS staff especially want to be treating and caring for their patients. But the staff shortages across the NHS are making this more difficult every day. And we really can't solve anything without better pay. So the CSP focuses on pay issues for staff, but also proactively campaigns to promote a, promote a positive public image of physiotherapy and influence key decision makers to invest in physiotherapy services. So, for example, we had a lot of space campaign after COVID, um, where we found that rehab facilities and especially hydrotherapy pools were closing down. 
Um, so we re produce resources to support members to campaign and influence to keep these facilities in operation and accessible for patients. CFP lobbying also led to the government writing to all NHS chief execs to urge them to restore physio rehab facilities. So we've got lots of work going on leading the movement for rehab, ensuring that patients have access to high quality community rehab when and where they need it. Just another example of one of the campaigns the CSP has run um, is our recent campaign around microaggressions, which I'm sure you'll have come across. Um, so this is part of our commitment to actively oppose discrimination. And the campaign aims to reduce microaggressions faced by our members to improve their experiences of work and study and includes the hub with resources so that you can learn how to create an environment in which microaggressions are spotted quickly, challenged and handled appropriately in the workplace. So there's a really broad range of campaigns and support for members there and a lot of this comes from members themselves so when you tell us um, what you'd like the CSP to focus on we will listen and respond to that. So I'm going to just briefly go over um, a little bit more about the teams at the CSP. So while the CSP does a lot of work for physiotherapy as a whole, we also provide tailored support and advice on an individual basis which we've touched on previously and it's really valued by our members. So the inquiries team is the first point of contact for all inquiries and you can contact them by phone, email or post. No question is too big or too small and sometimes depending on the question they will pass um, on your query to the professional advice team or a member of the union service if more detailed advice is needed. So the CSP's union service team are available by phone Monday to Friday and the staff work closely with your local steward or rep um, who are here to help you if your job, working conditions or physiotherapy services are at risk. And the CSP, C CSP's senior negotiating officers represent members during grievances and um, disputes with employers we've mentioned before. Meanwhile, on the other side um, of the CSP, the CSP's professional advice service is run by a team of advisors with various backgrounds in physiotherapy and they can give advice to members on complex and specialist inquiries around physiotherapy practice including um, standards, international working, service design and scope of practice. We also have a legal service to members which um, can support with regards to employment law, copyright advice and even a criminal investigation and prosecution outside of work. So as you have gleaned, the CSP provides support, resources and opportunities for physios, some of which you'll be familiar with if you were a student member of the CSP. Once you're a practising member, you'll get to access additional benefits related to the workplace that we've talked about, such as employment advice and support and legal representation. What's really important on this page is the QR code. Um, so if you bookmark this page and have a look at the web page that it links to, you can see a list of all the benefits and the full range that will be available to you once you're practicing um, so that you know how and where to access those benefits should you need them. Thanks, Daisy. So um, I'm just going to remind um, people on the call of um, our e-mentoring platform. So if you've already been a student CSP member from your final year, um, you may be aware that you've had access to our e-mentoring scheme. Um, if you weren't aware of that, you can, if and you are a member, you can look at that from now. And if you aren't a member and join as a chartered member, you'll have access to this throughout your career. So the e-mentoring platform is designed to enable CSP members to find a mentor who can support their career and continuing professional development needs by sharing knowledge and expertise. A mentor's role is to champion and support your development by being a role model and they can help and guide you throughout your career. You may be matched with a mentor based on particular needs that you have and you can indicate these when you request a mentor. Um, so the platform enables you to search a mentor based on their skills. Um, you may, it, it's also connected to our professional development, our professional networks that I'll mention a bit later on. Back to Alex. Yes, so this slide is just to um, acknowledge really and know how important it is about the move from being a student to an autonomous practitioner. 
And as Karen mentioned, we know that you can feel really nervous about this transition period and have a lot of questions about what type of jobs to apply for and the different career options. And probably as you've already been looking, there are so many options available that um, not just within the NHS. So it's really worth looking into the variety of career routes available, which include the four pillars of physiotherapy practice, clinical, research, education and leadership. So there is more details on all of this in the CSP's graduate handbook, which we've mentioned. This is sent out to all members in their final year, all CSP members in their final year. Choose around uh, looking at different roles and how to write a good application. We also have a wealth of information on our websites about dif different career options, including videos and case studies. And in particular, I'd really recommend looking at the web pages that have just gone live today around becoming a physiotherapist, which includes five career videos, but also first contact physiotherapy and the advanced and consultant practice pages, which I know this might seem a long way off, but they've got some great, great case studies on um, giving advice to new graduates. We also, if you are a member, um, have a new graduate bulletin, which um, you'll receive um, a few times throughout the year and it's got lots of information about applying to your first job and experiences from graduates. Um, so as mentioned before the traditional NHS rotational posts um, are most commonly um, talked about when you go into your job um, and they provide a chance for you to develop a broad experience, work with a range of patients and professionals and increase your confidence in various clinical settings. But it's also worth looking at different NHS trusts or independent sector organisations that offer static posts and different early career options. So the term preceptorship is becoming more, more well known to employers and employees and if you haven't heard of it already it's about a period of structured support to healthcare workers um, through key, key moments of their career transition, for example student to graduate. Um, and the aim of these programmes is to give you confidence to act as an autonomous practitioner and it should be all about your individual goals, career aspirations and well-being. So I'd really recommend that when you are looking for an employer that you look to see whether they have a preceptorship programme or similar to help you with settling into your new role, as there's a lot of evidence behind how useful these programmes can be. But also you can prepare in advance by completing the um, Health Education England e-learning, it's called, it's the Skills for Health module, um, around preceptorship which will help you just um, think a bit more about your um, transition um, and early career and um, this is um, obviously Health Education England but it's available for the whole of the UK but also there's a Flying Start programme in Scotland which you might have heard of if you're based in Scotland and there's ongoing work in Wales. Thanks, Alex. So um, just to talk a little bit more about CPD resources that you can use to evidence your commitment to improving your practice and accelerate your career progression. So we all know the importance of CPD. Um, hopefully you do by now. Um, as well as the ePortfolio, we have some free CPD courses for members. The CSP's Learning Hub is a virtual learning environment where you can access courses, modules and eBytes all of which are designed to hone your clinical expertise and enhance your CV. Student members also unlock access to a student specific learning hub, which some of you may, be, may have already had a look at. This is a member only web page storing webinars and video content such as this one designed to complement your studies and facilitate the transition to the workplace. Um, one in particular that I would recommend watching is one called Your First Physio Job um, and that features some employers, um, soon to be graduates and they have some really good tips in there. So when your university access ceases, you'll still need to keep up to date with the latest evidence and research. Our physio, specifically, our physio specific library and information service will ensure you have what you need to, pro to provide the best care to your patients. So you may have already used this as, as part of your studies, but you've still got access to this when you graduate um, to help with that continuous improvement. So this includes our discovery service and knowledge search tool where you can access a range of materials including e-journals, bibliographic databases, professional guidance and clinical evidence to support your work. 
you'll be able to carry out literature searches and create alerts on new publications which will help you to specialise on a certain topic and alongside the resources themselves we've got a brilliant professional friendly library service um, and they'll be they're there to support and signpost you and if there's something that you're looking for that isn't there they can do their best to find that for you next slide please daisy thank you so um, one important thing to do as a graduate is to keep up to date with what's going on in physiotherapy. Hopefully you've been doing that already. Being more informed about the profession and knowing about some of the contemporary topics and challenges going on in practice can inform your career and help you to understand the bigger picture outside of your place of work. So a great way to stay informed is via our monthly Frontline magazine. This is an easy to read publication containing lots of member stories, perhaps some of you have featured in it. Um, it also features news and opportunities. We have our scientific journal featuring high, featuring high quality research and this is the type of literature you might refer to as part of your continued learning. There are also CSP email bulletins that you can sign up for. These include our weekly email bulletin called Physio News, which is a really good place to skim the headlines and find out about recommended jobs of the week. And you can also sign up to our email bulletin specifically for new graduates called Graduate Life. So these emails and, and publications help you to stay connected. In the future, if you'd like to write for any of our magazines or bulletins, then please get in touch. We want as much member-led com content as possible. We also have over 60 interactive online forums. You may have already accessed the student ICSP, as we call them. Uh, they cover clinical and occupational specialisms. And when you become a CSP member, if you haven't already, um, you join a community of physios and other students who can relate to your experiences and this is a really good way to get in touch with them. So you can use these member forums to ask questions of experienced physios, seek advice on anything that may be on your mind or perhaps share work that you're involved with. So again feel free to use the QR code on the slide to sign up to our mailing list and you'll get exclusive access to events and opportunities. So for those who haven't got their first job yet, um, this is a slide for you. So there are plenty of places to look for work. One easy option is to browse job boards to view live jobs and set up alerts to receive them directly into your inbox. There are also some suggestions where you can do that on the slide. Be sure to check the advertisements in Frontline as well. Um, that's a CSP's monthly magazine and they always have job adverts in there. Different organizations may have different application processes. So whether you're writing a CV, completing a, an online form or submitting a video that this is your chance to shine and to get that interview. The NHS website provides guidance on how to write your application form and while there is plenty of general information are available there are specific recommendations for physio graduates in the CSP graduate handbook and that kind of covers using your portfolio and how to make your placement um, experience stand out. It also contains really good information um, and advice about how to prepare, prepare for an interview. When you're leaving university, make sure now that you, prov you provide your networks uh, with your new, port new postal and email addresses. Um, that's if you always sign up with your university details, make sure you update your CSP account settings. Just to say, because obviously I don't know where everybody's from, in Scotland, the NHS jobs vacancies in Scotland are advertised on the NHS Scotland recruitment website, and that should be checked regularly. And, and, and as Daisy mentioned earlier, there is a flying start programme in Scotland. There's certain kind of conditions in Wales for graduates who have benefited from an NHS funded place through the NHS Wales bursary scheme, scheme and they are required to be employed in Wales for two years. Basically, jobs with that process or jobs are still um, found through the NHS Jobs website. Um, in Northern Ireland, just to touch on Northern Ireland quickly, the advert for Band 5 roles in the NHS is a rolling advert. When 20 applications have been received, interviews take place and then a new advert is released and then interviews are conducted regionally. If you want any more information on those, get in contact with the CSP and um, one of the officers in those regions will give you more advice. Thanks, Adam. So um, just a little bit more about community and being able to connect with other people across the profession. Um, another way that you might find work is through our member networks. So we have three groups of member networks for you to get involved in. 
These groups provide a fantastic networking opportunity. Not only will you meet like-minded, proactive and passionate people, but you'll have access to specialists and experts from within the profession. So there are 13 regional and national CSP networks. Um, Adam just mentioned the different processes in, in different areas of the UK. Um, and some of those networks correspond with Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. So based on where you are, you can get to know from others and learn in your local area. Um, if you don't know where you're going to be working when you qualify, you can connect with others in your area and help you to discover other opportunities and think about what you might want to do and where. Um, if you're moving home after studying away, you can um, join the network where you've studied and also when you're at home, um, there's no limits on to which networks you can um, get involved with on a regional basis. So then we also have three diversity networks that you can see the logos for there. Um, one is the LGBTQIA network, we have the disability network and also the Black, Asian, Minority Ethnic Network. So these diversity networks have been, they've been going since the 1990s, so for quite a long time now. Um, and they're really established at the CSP and a really brilliant support network for anybody who identifies as belonging to any of these groups. Um, you can join them as long as you identify with that group, you can join one or more. And the aim of these networks is to engage and support existing members, um, challenge factors that limit individual opportunities and create positive change within the profession. In addition to the regional networks and diversity networks, we have a group of clinical professional networks, which I alluded to earlier. So these member groups work in specific areas or specialties, just like uh, mental health, paediatrics or MSK. Um, again, it might be that you don't know which area of physiotherapy you want to pursue yet, but it's a good way of finding out more about areas of specialism. Um, again, you can get in touch with them online via the ICSP and a lot of them offer resources for you to learn more about that specialism. Um, often there are webinars or some in-person events that um, I've been to a few and they're, they're really, really well run, really well worth going to and gives you a good insight into that area of specialism. So the CSP forges links and creates space for connections to be made between physios from different areas, regionally and professionally. And the idea is that you will share experiences and best practice. Being part of the professional community gives you a great sense of belonging. That's what we're really aiming for and confidence in your knowledge of physiotherapy. And we hope that you'll find access to these networks are a real strength as you continue on into the next stage of your career. Thank you. So hopefully by now you're thinking this all sounds great and you're really keen to sign up. Um, so we just want to explain the different categories of CSP membership, um, because especially at this time, there's a few categories to be aware of. Um, so there is a big financial saving to be made if you sign up while you're still a student and we would encourage you to do this and I will explain why. So as a CSP student member, you'll be automatically enrolled onto our graduate affiliate membership when your course finishes. And this membership allows you free access to the benefits you received as a student, bar insurance, which you'd have needed for placement. Um, until you upgrade to chartered status. And the reason that we provide this for free is because we really want to give you time to find the right role and arrange your HCPC registration once you graduate without it having the added pressure. Um, so we offer all students up to 12 months of this membership category for free. So that's the first thing to be aware of. Um, the second thing we offer is that once you are ready to become chartered and you found your dream role, um, you'll obviously gain access to the benefits we've talked about today that you'll need in the workplace. Um, and you can upgrade your membership from the graduate affiliate to a chartered membership online. Um, and we also give you three months of free chartered membership um, if you upgrade within 12 months of your course finishing, just to ease that transition into um, getting your salary. Um, so the cost of CSP membership for chartered physios is £35.10 per month. And this might initially seem a lot, but your membership of the CSP is a really comprehensive package of everything you need to practice safely and confidently. So this includes chartered status, which Alex touched on at the beginning and how important that is, um, access to legal advice and trade union support and workplace insurance and member benefits. So the reason that this is all in a one stop shop is because uh, the CSP provides everything, whereas some other professions might require you to purchase these separately. So 
just to give you some comparisons, membership of the chartered body for accounting costs £34.50 a month, and that doesn't come with the workplace support or insurance, so it has a much less of an offer for a similar price. Um, and also comparatively, the cost of a union, unison membership, um, which is an example of another trade union, for a band five physio is £17.25 per month. And that's just for the trade union services, which obviously come as part of the CSP package. Um, so we're really committed to making sure that CSP membership is affordable and it's providing you with useful benefits that you'll need throughout your career. So we've come to the end of the presentation. I really hope that's given you some useful information and we look forward to welcoming you as a member of the CSP. Um, just wanted to wish you all the best of luck as you embark on this final stage and congratulations because this has obviously been a really difficult few months with exams and finalising placements. So thank you so much for finding the time to come meet us today and hear about the workplace support that we can offer you.